The Boston Celtics are legitimately deadly. A 28-point New England massacre in North Carolina saw seven C's post double-figure scoring, the new Bald Mamba D. White send back three shots, KP post 14 and 12, in addition to six Beantown defenders snatch three-plus steals. With Jason Tatum, Chris Stapps, Porzingis, Jalen Brown, plus elite number four and five options in Drew Holiday and Derek White, the Boston Celtics are known for being top-heavy. However, in addition to that firepower at the head of the snake, Peyton Pritchard was third on the Celtics in scoring during the preseason. The player picked up as the 14th man in Svi Mihailuk, made 44% of the 18 threes he attempted in the preseason. Former Cavalier and Lamar Stevens was fifth on the team in rebounding and one of an insane 12 Celtics to average at least 6.8 points per game. Two-way contract center Namiyash Keita led Boston in offensive rebounds per game and gives the Celtics solid insurance up front behind KP, Al Horford, and Luke Cornett. We're going to look at how the most quietly iconic starting five weapon got it done versus Charlotte, break down Boston's depth in the aftermath of losing Smart, Brogdon, and both Grant and Robert Williams, and discuss if Porzingis impacts the offensive system to a world championship number 18 extent. Stay tuned. Right quick, just 13.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks to the world for any bit of support. Back to the content. Beasting in Charlotte, D. White stuffed the stat sheet with 14 points, 4 boards, 2 dimes, 2 steals, 3 blocks, while being a game best plus 23. Derek doesn't get enough mainstream credit for Boston owning an Eastern Conference title and five playoff series wins over the past two years. His top-notch effort on both sides of the court is a sight to behold for a player that's just 6'4". Derek gets challenged like your ordinary guard would at the basket, but this high-flying one-handed contest shows us White protects the paint more like a center as it forces the air ball. White's intimidating backdoor stunt potentially contributes to Hayward slipping, and after Pritchard overhelps, making him late to recover to PJ Washington, you'd see about any other guard let his center do the rim protection here and live with the result. D. White's different, as he elusively shuffles over to the hash marks, baiting the attack, then he springs up with his 99 rated standing jump for the swat. This momentum cross gets him a 20 degree angle going downhill, and despite Nick being directly in his grill, White has the hang time to switch to his right and somehow finish over a player with a 7-3 wingspan. This pick and pop with KP shows you the space Porzingis is going to open up for this offense, as Hayward's taken out of the equation when he rotates onto him, allowing Derek to take on the slower Mark Williams to complete the decisive 6 dribble speed blur. Here he goes from checking Mark Williams in the post to guarding LaMelo on the baseline, and watch how he doesn't overcommit too soon to bait the entry before picking it off. Swing swing from Boston after the trap on Drew results in LaMelo getting caught ball watching, and note the adjusted jump shooting elevation the undersized white gets to rise over the top of Ball's late closeout. Cutting off Melo's right to force him baseline, which is supposed to funnel him into backside help, the Jays are too slow to react, but White's sound positioning, aggressive trailing pressure, and springiness bail them out with a swat off the backboard. Even after picking up PJ Washington on his sprint back in transition, he sacrifices the stamina to then hustle to PJ's swing pass, where he denies the Gordon reverse. You hear Tatum and Brown brought up with Boston all the time, but White providing Boston with a second team all defensive guard and one of the best fifth options across the game is not a mainstream narrative. His impact since being traded from San Antonio to Boston at the 2022 deadline has however caught the attention of Laker guard D'Angelo Russell, who stated the goal of his career was to be like Derek White. Gotta love D'Lo. And he's got a point, given the rarity of White's defensive fearlessness for a player in the backcourt. In addition to White, Boston's supporting cast off the pine is also undervalued. The Celtics bench goes from being led by 6th man of the year 50-40-90 club member Malcolm Brogdon to now breakout 4th year pro and Oregon Ducks legend Peyton Pritchard. Three 17 plus point outings and two 20 pieces from Pritchard in the preseason signal the 6th man position is in decent hands. It'll be a big role for Peyton to fulfill, but given his shooting confidence, general aggressiveness, plus poised pick and roll creating operation, this bodes well in terms of the leap many are looking to see him take. Peyton does have one of the best two-way sharpshooting big men next to him off the bench in Al Horford, who's won Boston a handful of massive playoff games over the past half decade. You can't forget about the NBA's 13th leading three-point shooter last season being the product of Marquette and Virginia in Sam Hauser. We've yet to see anything close to the best from Uncle Sam entering his third year as a pro. At center, 
Luke Cornett's already invented a new way to defend, and his beneficial wingspan is proven by simply the fact that he's one of the tallest players in the league, standing 7'2". 2023 offseason pickups, Lamar Stevens and O'Shea Brissett give you athleticism and toughness on the wing next to Hauser. Stevens and Brissett should also help keep Tatum and Brown in prime condition for the postseason by logging minutes at their position. Rookie Jordan Walsh could help with the Jays' durability as well by giving you some decent minutes on the wing at some point. Meanwhile, at the guard spots, former Toronto Raptors Delano Banton and Svi Mihailuk proved to be capable options in the preseason. Banton had a 20-point game, while Svi averaged a team fifth-best 12 points. Let's go back to the five spot, though. And eligible for 50 NBA games on a two-way contract, Boston picked up Portuguese former Sacramento King and All-Mountain West first-team center Namiesh Keita. In his NCAA conference, the 24-year-old from Lisbon was also a back-to-back -back defensive player of the year. He's far from strictly a defender, though. Keita made a Celtic best 87% of his field goals on 15 shots over three outings in the exhibitions. As a seven-footer, his low center of gravity, old-school interior-focused mindset, and soft touch could make him a Boston rotation piece. Namiesh was also 10th among all players in offensive rebounding, and given the Celtics just waived Wenyan Gabriel plus traded away Time Lord, converting Keita's contract from a two-way to a full-time deal when the time calls for it would be the right move to make. The success of this GM Brad Stevens head coach Joe Mazzulla fueled Celtics team, however, lives and dies with the four-man attack of Jason Tatum, Chris Stapps Porzingis, Jalen Brown, and Drew Holiday. Aside from 2019, where they lost to Milwaukee in the second round, and aside from 2021, where Brown wasn't healthy and they lost to Brooklyn in the first round, Boston's made the conference finals with JB in every year since he was drafted back in 2016. Despite being on the verge of 27, Brown has made the NBA's Final Four five times already. This team was up 2-1 in the 2022 Finals and up 94-90 with five minutes left on the verge of going up 3-1 in Game 4. This year, they were one win away from getting back to the Finals. With that said though, the inconsistencies in big games from both Jalen and Jason make it still feel like Boston's been in a holding pattern for the last few years forced to patiently await the development of the left-handed finishing ability from Jalen Brown and the consistent superstar mindset from Jason Tatum. In terms of JB's left hand, this momentum cross to his left and under control finish in Charlotte bodes well. Whether or not they themselves think the questions about their games are BS, despite all the playoff wins they've achieved, quite frankly, Brown and Tatum have been game planned for and neutralized consistently in the later rounds and have to be better top weapons. Then again, who knows what would have happened if Tatum didn't roll his ankle and now having a 7-3 Steph Curry-esque sniper like Porzingis who made exactly 50% of his 4.5 three-pointers per game over four exhibitions opens up the court significantly. Porzingis isn't the best passer or defender, but that's where Holiday, White, and the team leader in preseason dimes and Tatum factor in. Boston losing their top assist guy and fan favorite in Marcus Smart will be tough to make up for, but it's clear they have better floor spacing with KP and a smarter, less turnover-prone decision maker as their QB in Drew. With all due respect to Batman Grant Williams and ongoing Celtics legend Al Horford, Porzingis is also the best stretch big the Jays have ever played with. Who's the most underrated player on the Boston Celtics in your opinion though? Let me know down below for a chance at next video shout out and to compete in Community Speaks. Today's shout out goes to Min Maurice, who says the most insane part about Steph is his off-ball movement, joyful attitude, and gravity shooting. Great take. You're the GOAT for watching all the way through. Thank you so much. DFlow signing off.